gossip. What's up, world? You're tuned into 423 FM. You already know we've got you covered with your daily dose of celebrity drama. Now let's get into it. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the 423. Over in the podcast world, one of Barstool Sports' most popular titles, Call Her Daddy, is stirring up a lot of drama. The sex-themed podcast hosted by Alexandra Cooper and Sophia Franklin usually drops weekly episodes, but as of now, it's been about a month since they've released anything, causing their fan base, whom they refer to as the Daddy Gang, to wonder what the hell's going on. On April 15th, the pair took to their Call Her Daddy Instagram page to let fans know that there wouldn't be an episode that week, saying, finally, the trail will be revealed. The next week, on April 21st, They missed another episode and once again went to IG, writing, We're always 100% transparent with the daddy gang, but legally, we can't speak out yet. What we will say is, we will never leave you daddy gang. The minute we can speak, we will. Hashtag free the fathers. Obviously, their posts thus far have been pretty vague, but given the talk of legal repercussions... It isn't very surprising to find out that Alex and Sophia were trying to get out of their contract with Barstool and take their podcast elsewhere. According to reports from Page Six, the Call Her Daddy girls wanted to separate from Barstool Sports in order to pursue other business ventures like book and TV deals, but they weren't able to because Call Her Daddy is owned by Barstool Sports. Up to this point, the entire saga makes sense. If a podcast you love randomly stops posting episodes and say they can't disclose why, there's a pretty good chance they're either trying to get more money or just trying to get out of their contract completely. But now, a couple weeks after they express their desire to separate from Barstool and go elsewhere, it looks like Alex and Sophia are separating from each other too. A source told the New York Post that the girls are no longer on speaking terms, which was also caused by the current negotiations going on regarding their podcast. This source said, They're not speaking to each other anymore. They've completely turned on each other and started arguing over who was the real talent and who did more of the heavy lifting for the podcast. I think their audience would be surprised to learn what's been going on behind the scenes with them. It's not the loyal, fun-loving friendship they put out there. In that same article, Dave Portnoy, the founder of Barstool, told the Post that he pitched not only a significant raise, but also a way for the girls to get the intellectual property in order for them to finish out their three-year contract, which they're about two years into at this point. This detail specifically is what seemingly caused the tension between Alex and Sophia, because while Alex wanted to take the new deal Dave was offering them, Sophia refused, which was heavily influenced by the advice of her boyfriend, the EVP of HBO Sports, Peter Nelson. So, after all this back and forth online and the girls simply saying they can't discuss what's going on, Dave decided to drop a new episode under the Call Her Daddy moniker, taking it upon himself to explain what's really happening. There's a whole 30-minute podcast with Dave talking about his side of the story, which you can obviously go listen to yourself to get the whole picture, but basically, the Call Her Daddy girls want out before the end of their contract. Though their base salary was $75,000 a year, according to their initial contract, the show became wildly successful and Dave gave them both raises six months into the show. After the first year, Alex pulled in $506,000 because she edits the podcast, and Franklin received $461,000. A few months ago, when they wanted to renegotiate their contracts, their lawyer sent Barstool a list of demands, which included $1 million guaranteed for each of them, They no longer wanted to be Barstool employees, and they wanted 50% of all money earned from the brand, including merchandise and ads. Plus, they wanted to own Call Her Daddy. Dave said no, and that's when the girls started to look at other networks. According to Dave, in his 17 years of working in this business, he's never dealt with anyone as unprofessional, disloyal, and greedy as Alex and Sophia. Once again, at the suggestion of Sophia's boyfriend, The girls reportedly shopped their podcast around to other networks, and because of that, Dave made himself very clear in saying that he would sue if they take Call Her Daddy anywhere else. On May 19th, the day after Dave gave his side of the story, Sophia hopped onto Instagram stories in an effort to clear her name. While she says she's still willing to do the show and work things out, the problem she has is with Alex, 
who she says is making deals behind her back and treating her like an employee. Okay. There's been a lot of crazy shit being thrown around and some of it is true. Some of it is false. I'm going to be 100% open and honest with you guys. Alex and I created Call Her Daddy together. March of 2018, we created it, the two of us. And at that time, we were best friends, roommates, arguably like sisters. Daddy gang, you know you've been there from the beginning. Then we took the show to Barstool Sports. Did Barstool Sports help blow up Call Her Daddy? 100%. After some time had passed, Alex and I then both decided we wanted to consider some other options for multiple reasons. One of them being for the benefit of the daddy gang, believe it or not. But we did. And do we regret the way we went about it? Absolutely. We could have handled it differently. But we still wanted to work something out with Barstool, hence the meeting with Dave. And after the meeting with Dave, that's when negotiations started with both Alex and I to get a deal done. This is where the story gets extremely fucked up. I found out that Alex had gone behind my back and done something. And I found out it wasn't the first time. And that's why we're here. I trusted Alex. I feel betrayed. But ultimately, she was my best friend. And that doesn't change overnight. And I'm willing to do call her daddy. I really am. I just can't do it under the circumstances that she wants. I can't do it while she's demanding that she controls the show. I don't want to be like her employee. We are partners. We've always been that way. We've always been 50-50. And so it's putting me in like a, an extremely tough position. So here we are. I do want to tell the daddy gang how much I love them, especially the ones that have stuck by me during all of this shit. You, I can't even put into words how much it is meant to me. Um, thank you. And I just remember when I quit my job for all of us to become a family or a gang or whatever and um, I will be eternally grateful. You guys are the reason I'm here. Just an hour after Sophia posted those Instagram stories, Dave held his own emergency press conference on the Call Her Daddy Instagram page, basically saying the only reason Sophia is saying what she is now, that she would work things out with Barstool, is because her other deal fell through. Okay, emergency press conference time. And I know I'm on the Call Her Daddy feed, so you're probably like, what the fuck's an emergency press conference? That's when I feel like I have something important to say or to respond to something. I break in and do it. So here we go. I'm sure most of you guys saw Sophia on her Snapchat story has finally responded to all this madness. Uh, and she said a whole lot of fucking nothing. Like, literally nothing. Didn't even mention Soup Man. It felt like, to me, she was just getting ready for a lawsuit, gearing up for a lawsuit. And to be honest, that's the vibe I've had from her and her lawyers and William Morris and probably Soup Man for the last two weeks. Like, she fucking said she was going to sue us for the Call Her Daddy IP when her and Alex were still a team. It's like, what do you mean? Like, how's that fucking possible? Um, so that's what it sounded like, trying to say she owns 50% of it, even though Barstool owns 100% of it. But whatever. Um, you know, she didn't really dispute anything that I've said, and how can you? It's easy to make good arguments when you have the truth on your side. That's why I always like to tell the truth, because I can be like, bing, 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 bing. I have all the fucking, as the girls, I've learned it. I have all the tea. That, I guess that's what you guys call it. I spill the tea. I fucking guzzle the tea, and I go, Psh, and spit it all over the place, because I'm telling the truth. I get it. I'd probably be mad, too, a little bit if I was Sophia and Alex. I mean, they were a team. They were both getting ready to stab me right in the fucking face. And then I do that awesome deal on my roof deck. And then Alex comes to her senses like, wait a minute, we can't bail on this. It's such a fucking good deal. They're giving us more than what we want. They're giving us everything we could dream of. So if you won't do it, because Suitman was definitely involved in my mind. I don't have the fucking proof, but you know it. And getting that Wondery deal that we know was there to call the show the fathers and fucking leave Barstool. So Alex is like, I can't do it. She can't convince 
Sophia to leave. Because Sophia is with Suitman and they're just walking down the street with fucking that big old head on fucking Suitman. And Suitman's like, how'd I get a girl like this? Yeah, exactly, Suitman. Fucking go quote Walt Whitman. Um, so yeah, Sophia's mad because she's like, wait a minute, how can you pull out at this point? Well, Alex has to look out for number one at some point. It would have been a fucking disaster if you guys just bounced and went to Wildry. You think I was just going to fucking take that? It would have been World War Three. Instead, you got everything you wanted, could leave in a year. It, like, that's where Alex was smart. And let me say this. If the deal was going to get done, as Sophia's like, I want to be at Barstow, I want 50% of it, then the deal would have gotten done. It would have gotten done on the roof deck. It would have gone that night. What happened? Why was no one talking to us for three days? Because they were moving the goalpost. Team Soupman was. At least that's what I believe to be the case. And you can't really be like, oh, I want 50%. I'd love to be at Barstool. That only started happening when the other thing fell through because Alex left. You, like, you know, I feel bad for Sophie in a way because I guess I got such a big fucking heart. But, like, you did this all yourself. You can't cry about getting stabbed in the back when you were stabbing us in the back. And I have all the text telling her that. It's like, what, what do you want me to do? It's like, you were getting ready to fuck me over. Now you want me to be like, to Alex, like, no, she can't come back without you. It's like, well, you should have thought about that before you're trying to fucking stomp on my face. So again, I think everything I said is the truth. Um, I bet we're going to get a lawsuit. And we're still working out. Who knows what happens with Alex? And I've said this, by the way, a gazillion times. And I don't know if I just said a minute ago, my brain's falling apart. If Sophia came to us first, and was like, hey, Alex won't sign this. She has some boyfriend she's in codes with and they just won't see the light. We would have done the deal with Sophia. We didn't have preferential treatment. We just played the cards we were dealt. But like I said, this, this whole thing's so fucking crazy. Honestly, if I had advice for somebody who's been doing this for 17 years and not some fucking suit who like, you know, quotes Walt Whitman and says he's not on social media, just let it go. Like you lost, you fucked yourself. And if she still wants her own podcast with Barstool, I'll give it to her. I'm a friendly guy. We'll give it to her. We'll support it. But, like, you lost the caller daddy battle by being an idiot and listening to bad fucking advice from bad fucking people. Now that Alex is trying to work things out with Barstool and keep the podcast there, Sophia doesn't really have any options but to try to get back on both Dave and Alex's good side. But from what he's saying... It seems like the podcast might just drop Sophia completely and continue with Alex alone or possibly a different co-host. At the time of this recording, Alex hasn't personally said anything about what's going on, so for now, that's where the drama ends. Like Dave mentioned, if the Caller Daddy girls just wrote out the last year of their contract and then went for renegotiations, Barstool would have had no choice but to give them what they wanted, or they actually could have gone somewhere else without fear of being sued. But it really does seem like Sophia's boyfriend, Peter, got in her head by telling her to explore other options, and that's what caused this whole thing to go very left. Anyway, I want to know what you guys think about this. Should Alex and Sophia have just waited out the next year and renegotiated once the contract was over? Or do they deserve to leave early if they feel like they're being underpaid? Leave your thoughts down below in the comments, subscribe to The Fortune Thief for more videos, and if you like this one, just give it a quick thumbs up. That is it for today. I will see you guys next time. Bye.